old boys, girls, archers of all kinds. We're back here at Spokane Valley Archery and Josh is gonna teach me how to shoot side hills. I think I drop more shots because of side hills, uphills and downhills than anything. It, it's just, there's a lot to clear up and we're gonna like lean on him to tell us uh, what an experienced archer should do and how we should treat these situations. Let's fix you, buddy. Let's fix me up real good. <laughs> Take down Dan, this is, if it's your first time at the channel, we have TAC coming up in the middle of July. Josh is gonna shoot with us. He's going to be there. And I am trying to take down Dan. Dan is my partner on this YouTube channel. He's really good. He's been shooting his bow for a long time. And I'm not gonna feel bad at all when I take him down. <laughs> <laughs> Slacking on my range here. 55. So a couple of things on these side hills. Number one, obviously it's gonna be a little different for hunting or target depending on what you choose to do. Um, if you're in a target situation, the first thing you wanna do is try to find the flattest ground you can stand on possible. I'll come up to something like this where there's just a little indent and I'll even kick in the grass a little bit and try to get to where my feet are flat because the fat, flatter your feet are, the steadier you're gonna be. Whenever you're shooting on a hill like this, which this doesn't look like that much of a hill, but it will really tear you up if you're not paying attention. We always want have it framed in our head that we wanna have the bubble in between those two black lines. Well, whenever you're shooting on a grade, at all, you don't. You actually want to split the line with your bubble. And what I mean by that is you draw your bow back and lean your bow into the hill until you split the black line and then bring your pin down to the target and try to pull through the shot. And as the shot breaks, the bow leans back because your body wants to do this it's on a hill. Pulling you downhill, right? It's pulling you downhill no matter what you do. So now, and by the time it goes off, it will be level when it goes off. And that's the trick to trying to hit that. Now that is relevant, bow hunting, shooting target, whatever, it doesn't matter, it's the same thing. You always bubble into the hill and you'll really see it the farther out you get. It makes a lot bigger difference. It's super, super important to bubble into the hill and split that line. Get a close lens and watch my bubble, my bubble, my bubble, my bubble, my bubble. And I'll give you an example, whatever you prefer. What distance did we say this was? 55. 55, all right. You said to the bedded out, right? Yeah. Okay, so I've got my footing as much as I can. Try to get it flat, normal stance otherwise. Draw the bow back, get it level. Let's get my bubble nice and square. Come down to the target and then lean that bubble about like that. And then as I pull, it works its way back out, just like that. It's pretty wild how like the bubble actually ends up in the middle. It is kind of bizarre, but you wouldn't notice it unless you were actually watching it and you're always focused down there so you don't really see it so much. But that's absolutely the way to work on these side hill angles. And the steeper the angle is, the harder it is and the faster it moves out. So you kind of really got to pay attention to it and keep it in there. But that's the, uh, that's the trick for shooting on the hills. And normal stance with level as possible. Normal stance, yeah, just lean into the hill with your line. Even the steeper the angle, we still bubble or similar amount because that's because shot timing break. You do, it's all timing break. It's not, it's not, it's going to move faster because of a steeper angle. Hopefully you've gotten your footing to the extent that you can kind of stand there, but you're always going to lean back that way as it goes off. You going to be ready for tack? I go wake up and not <laughs> practice and be ready for tack. We'll be fine. Oh uh, <laughs> boy. Yeah, I'm, I'm a confident human being. <laughs> <laughs> Plus, it's just Dan. <laughs> whoa, whoa, whoa. He just thinks because he's been mentoring Dan for a long time, like I can sneak up and whoop him off. <laughs> oh, that's true. Sorry. I, I, I should be worried about. <laughs> you think he meant that? <laughs> <laughs> I'm feeling good, y'all. That's It's that simple. This is a classic preview of what you guys can expect to see at TAC right here. Tim, closest to the center ring. MFJJ drifting. It's lonely at the top, boys. That's what I know. <laughs> <laughs> Is this lonely? There's no motivation to practice. And you got guys who are hungry like me <laughs> just grinding day in and day out. Josh has got like 17 bow setups. He's not sure which one he's gonna bring. <laughs> and uh, me, I got my bow set up, set up, broadhead tuned. Thank you all for watching. Do us a favor, subscribe to the channel. Go check out. Don't forget little old me. Hey guys. He's pumping out content. He's on the YouTube train. Can we call him a YouTuber yet? Well, how many, how many subs you gotta have to be called a YouTuber? 
I don't know. I think it's more of a lifestyle than a it subscriber is. account. This is true. It's become a lifestyle. It's become a lifestyle. You start sharing what you're eating. You start I sharing. Really done that I don't know. <laughs> Things can get weird. A lot to look forward to. Go check out his channel, podymarcher.com. He's got all the archery stuff. And he keeps delivering nuggets like this for us, which is, it's a double-edged sword because he's helping everyone, but he's helping chase him down. I would rather beat you at your best than just be you. <laughs> it's way more important to me. That's cool. That's cool. Appreciate it. All right, you guys, we'll catch you back for the next one.